It's been about a year since I did a paper space installation demo and not much has really changed um, in the installation experience but because we do have this new style again two library I thought I would show you uh, once again how to do this so um, first off go over to paperspace.com and create an account um, once you create an account you'll log in uh, when you log in for the very first time you're going to hit a screen that looks like this um, so gradient is sort of their version of collab and uh, core is sort of a you know the core uh, a virtual server so in this demo I'm gonna go ahead and show you core maybe in another demo I'll show you gradient but in let's start with core so you're just gonna click, go ahead and click on core and now uh, here's where you're going to start setting up your machine. So the first thing you need to do is you need to choose what region you're in. If you're in on the west coast or like west of the Mississippi, you're probably going to want to choose west coast. If you're on east of Mississippi, um, you'll probably want to choose east coast. If you're in Europe, you'll want to choose, choose Europe. Basically, choose the region that is closest to you. So I'm going to go ahead and click east coast, which is NY2. Next, we need to choose our OS. So uh, I recommend you click public templates, and then we're going to choose ML in a box. Um, this basically comes pre-installed with a bunch of stuff that we already need. Uh, this helps reduce a ton of install time, and this is probably why I recommend PaperSpace for people who want to use a server. Uh, if you're not ready, if you collab seems a little scary, um, and you just want to have a set it and forget it kind of thing, uh, I definitely recommend PaperSpace. You, you want to make sure you select this choice first. So uh, select this, and then um, we're going to come down here and we're going to choose a machine. Now, for many of you, your machines will be locked. You'll see a little lock icon. When you click on this lock icon, you'll see it's unavailable. And you have to tell people a little bit more, tell the Peer Space folks a little bit more about yourself. I recommend um, you can mention me by name. So just say, like, uh, watch a video with Derek Schultz or, like, taking one of Derek Schultz's classes, and I want to do StyleGen2 training. Like, if you put that in there, you will probably get a machine. Um, I do recommend that you do that, like, as soon as possible, however, because it might take a day or two for them to let you have a machine. So I've already done that for both the P5000 and the P6000. Um, honestly, your choice it's really your choice here which one you want to pick. I would probably recommend the P5000 for most people. Um, the price is a little bit lower. Uh, Salgan will still train fine. If you want to train like bigger models or faster or whatever, you might want to choose the P6000. Um, the only difference is the is basically the size of the GPU. Um, this is a 16 gigabyte GPU. This is a 24 gigabyte GPU. Um, there's not a whole lot of difference. I would probably just recommend the P5000 if you're not sure. I'm going to go ahead and pick the P5000 for myself. Now, you can sign a monthly deal with them. If you know that you want to like train for a whole month, um, a monthly cost will be a lot less. It'll be a lot less than an hourly. Um, most people probably don't want to give give paper space four hundred sixty one dollars immediately, so you might want to start with hourly and just see how it goes. So let's go ahead and switch to hourly, and we'll go and click on P five thousand. You want to choose your storage details. So. Um, I probably recommend at least 100 gigabytes for folks who are doing StyleGAN training. One, because you're going to upload your model to it, and then two, because um, you're going to do a lot of training with it, and this can stack up quickly. You might even want to go to 250. Um, one thing to note is that this will charge you by month. So this is per month. So $5 a month, $7 a month, $10 a month. If you leave your machine off um, and it's not running, you'll still be charged this storage fee. So if you don't run it for a month and uh, a month goes by and you have a $10 bill from Paperspace, this is why. Um, whereas these hours are only when your machine is on and running. So just be aware of that um, the pricing can confuse people sometimes. And they're like shocked when they get a bill. Um, what you'll need to do is like, and I'll show you in a minute how to delete a machine. Um, once you delete a machine, you will, first off, you'll lose all your storage. So if you have anything on that machine you haven't saved to your local computer, it'll be gone. So just be aware of that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just, actually, I'm just going to pick the 50 gigabyte because I'm not, this is just a demo. So um, I'm not really going to use it. Um, so you will set this up. You will run this. Um, Next detail here is your machine name. You can just give it a cute name. Um, I'll give it uh, the name of my new cat. Whoa, what happened there? Not sure what happened there. Okay. Um, I'm going to give this. Maybe I can't. Wait. Oh, yeah, I can. All right. I don't know what happened there. Um, give it a new name, the name of my new cat, Pumpkin. Um, and then we can choose a network. This is fine. Just leave it at default. Um, your options here, auto shutdown, auto snapshot, public IP. So the first thing is you do want a public IP address. Um, I just recommend that. You don't, probably in the stuff we're doing now, you don't need it, but I would probably recommend it anyway, just so you have, you can log in and get access to it from um, an FTP server or something. Um, auto snapshot, we will also turn this off. We're not really going to be making that many changes. And then lastly, auto shutdown, it's sort of up to you. Um, for most people, if you're doing training, I probably recommend setting it to a week just to make sure you're not getting overcharged. Um, but do be aware that as soon as you turn on your machine, it will shut off after a week. So um, even if you want to keep it on, it's tricky to do that. So um, 
you can't change this once your machine is on. You can only change it once when your machine is off. So just be aware of that issue. Um, last thing we need to do here is we need to um, go ahead and uh, add a payment card. Um, I'm actually not going to do that um, just because I already have a GPU set up. So I'm actually not going to pay for this. Um, but if you add a, uh, a card for yourself um, and then you go and click create your paper space, um, once, your, once a card is added, you will be billed. Um, I believe you'll be billed immediately for the storage cost. Um, I could be wrong about that. Um, and then you will be paying per hour on that credit card. So make sure you do that. Um, you can't set up a machine until you've given them a credit card. So uh, after this is a done, um, I'm going to switch over and show you what happens when you have a machine set up. Um, so I'll see you in just a second. Okay, so now that you've gone ahead and created your machine, it should take you to a screen that looks like this. This is your machines page. This is the list of all of the machines you have access to. Now you can add, I believe, up to five machines um, on Paperspace with like a personal account. Um, so you could run three or four different style game models all using the individual machines. Um, that will get very expensive. I probably don't recommend that. If this is, if that's sort of like the world you're in, you might want to check out something like Vast or other places where it's a little bit more affordable. Um, because you will be charged if they're all P5000, 78 cents per hour per machine. Um, so it gets kind of expensive to do all that. Now you'll see here that this is provisioning. Um, it's going to take a couple minutes for uh, them to assign you a machine and get it set up with the public template, amongst other things. So just be aware that that is a little bit of an issue. Um, it'll just take a little bit of time. So maybe leave for a while, come back and check on it. Um, one thing to note is you don't want to leave for too long because this will turn on your machine. So as, as soon as it's finished provisioning, your machine will be turned on and you will start being charged 78 cents per hour. So just be aware that like, don't walk away and forget about it and then come back and find, you know, the next morning that you've, you know, been running it for 12, 15 hours. Um, so do like, you know, keep an eye on this as it provisions. So I'm going to give it a couple more minutes. Um, and then when it's finished, I'll come back and I'll show you how to log in is now on and ready so this blue light went on now if you were sitting here and watching waiting it for provision to switch over to on and ready um, one thing to note is that uh, even though it says on and ready you can't really access it for another couple minutes it's like a weird quirk of paper space where really it says on and ready but it needs a couple more minutes before you're ready to go so there's a couple ways we can go from here one is we could uh, use the terminal to SSH into our machine um, you'll get an email with a password and a uh, IP address and you can use that to log in I'm actually going to show you a slightly easier way to do this. Um, there are other videos if you're interested in logging in via SSH. I've got other videos you can check out. Um, we're going to use the virtual desktop and the virtual desktop is a nice way for people who are still like getting their hands wet or uh, hands dirty, feet wet. Yes. Um, with uh, the terminal is you might be a little iffy about like logging in and CDing around that sort of thing. So we can use the virtual desktop. So the way to do that is you just click on this guy here and it's going to launch you into the virtual desktop. And what you're seeing now is you're basically seeing um, the desktop of the server we were using, right? So um, for those of you who are Mac and Windows people, you might not be familiar with this is Linux. Um, Linux is basically the version that we always use for most servers, I would say. Um, so we can actually access everything from here. Now there's a couple tricks. One is that copy and paste doesn't work as well as we would like it to. We'll figure out how to deal, deal with that in a minute. Um, but this is essentially our server. So if we go into the file folder over here, You'll see there are, there's just a, a bunch, there's desktop, downloads, documents, music, whatever. Um, this is basically an empty machine. Uh, there's not much in here. There's probably a couple applications. You can find applications by going over here. Um, and you'll see we've got a couple things here. Um, we are going to use the terminal for this. Sorry, there's just really not much of a way around it. Um, we're going to use the Biobo terminal. We're going to go ahead and click on this. And that pops, pops up a terminal window. So what we want to do is we want to actually go to and get um, our, our, our GitHub repo. So uh, I'm actually going to do this outside of um, the desktop. So I'm actually going to go up here and go to my, my personal Chrome window and click here. This is the uh, URL for this. So if you just copy up in here and hit copy, make sure you're using the DV Schultz version and not the NVIDIA one. Um, if you are not a part of my classes, you can use the NVIDIA one, but the mine's not better, it just has more features. Um, so make sure you use this, hit uh, Command-C. And I think what you want to do here, and let's see if this works, you're going to click on this little guy here, and you're going to go Sync Clipboard. Um, press Control-V to send to your local clipboard to Paperspace. Press Control-C to copy the Paperspace. Okay, so I want to do Control-V. I don't know if that works. Let's see. Um, okay, so now that I'm here, what I want to do is I want to type Git 
clone, and then Control-V. Nope, that didn't work. OK. Um, I think this might not work the way that I expected it to. Control-V. Nope. OK, this might not work, which is fine. I've experienced this before. I'm actually surprised this doesn't work the way I expected it to. OK, well, either way, what we can do is we can just type in this URL. Uh, it's not the hardest URL to, re to remember. Um, it'll be just be github.com slash dvschultz. I guess it's easy because it's my name. StyleGen2 dash ADA. So um, we're going to go back here. We're going to type in HTTPS. And then we're going to do github.com slash dvschultz. There's a T there if you're not familiar with my name. And then uh, StyleGan2 dash ADA. And we're going to hit return. And now you'll see over here in our home space, we've got StyleGan2 ADA. So, we're going to do next um, is we're going to do CD into STY. And if you press tab, it'll autocomplete for you. So, just do CD space STY and then the tab key. And then we're going to hit return. And now we're inside of this folder. So, we are basically looking at something that looks like this. You'll see there's a bunch of files in here. Now, if, you've not, if you're not a terminal person, you can type LS. And this should show pretty much the exact same files I see here. Yep, and sure enough, it does. So let's go back over to uh, this repo, and I believe down here we'll, we'll find out how to actually do a generated um, example just to make sure this works the way we expect it to. So let's do somewhere down here. Nope, let's see. Where did it go? Here we go. So we're just going to generate a list of met faces. So let's go ahead and grab this command. Actually, again, we can't because this is uh, not going to work for us. Um, this is going to be a little bit more annoying than I expected it to be because this is a long command. Um, let me just try Control C and then Control V. Now this must work on some other machine that is not this one. Um, option V. Nope. Function V? No. Okay. Well, that's fine. Um, we'll type in this command by hand, even though it's going to be annoying. Press Control V to send your local clipboard to paper space. Nope. That doesn't work. Okay. That's fine. Um, so we're going to type this command. So the command is python generate.py. So we're going to do python gen and again here you can press tab and it'll figure it out what it's supposed to be and then we're going to do out dir dash dash out dir equals out and then um, actually let's do dot slash out and then we want dash dash trunk which I believe should equal one yes and then seeds so our seeds are going to be whatever number we want it doesn't really matter what seeds you do I'm going to do seeds equals 1 dash 5, so it's just 1 through 5. And then we need to give it the network. And this is going to be where it's annoying. So the network is https slash nvlabs.fi or dash fi dot cdn. So nvlabs dash fi dash cdn dot nvidia.com slash stylegan2 slash ADA pre-trained met faces. So stylegan2 dash ADA slash pre-trained slash metfaces.pickle. So I think this is right. Let's run it and see. Well, not getting an error, so that's good so far. Cool. And now it's downloading. So this is going to download and run. Um, and when it's finished, we should have some files here. So you'll see we've created a folder called out now. And what's going to happen is in here we're going to get a uh, we're going to get five five images, right? Yeah, I think five. One, two, three, four, five. Um, and then we will get uh, 
some images produced by that. Now it has to, it's going to take a little bit of time because let's do this thing compiling. Don't worry about what this is. Uh, this takes a little bit of time for the very first run. Once it's finished, um, the next time you run this command, it will run much faster. So as you can see with paper space, we didn't have to do Anaconda. We didn't have to set up anything else. We had to run two commands really to get this installed. I guess three with the CD. Um, and if this runs correctly, as I'm hoping it will, um, that means we're all set up and we're ready to go. And from here, we'll do other videos on what to do with these things, that sort of thing. Um, but for now, this is everything we want to do. Cool, so now we're generating our images. And here you are. So you'll see we're producing images here. And you can see what they actually look like. So here we see um, this is what face one of the matte faces looks like. This is face two. Face seed three. Love that you get that crackling in it. That's pretty amazing. Seed four. And seed five. So if you are able to produce images, everything is good. You're ready to go um, with training and a bunch of other things. And I'll walk you through those steps in just a minute. Um, if you didn't, you might be stuck. You might want to reach out to me on Slack um, or message me uh, in other places. Um, so one last thing I'm going to show you in just a minute is I'm going to show you how to um, close out your machine and stop it so that way you're not being charged anymore for it. So let me go ahead and do that in just one minute. Look at how to actually close out our machine. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to click on this little guy here. And we're going to, so there's actually, you can actually shut down directly from here, which is maybe the nice way to do it. Um, so we'll go ahead and I'm just going to log out and I'll show you what to do. Um, you could just click shut down machine and you'll be fine. I'm going to show you another way to do it just in case uh, you are not on the screen. So shut down machine will work. Restart your machine if you just want to restart it. But know that restarting it means it will turn back on. You will be getting charged for it. I'm going to go ahead and click log out. Oh, that logged me out of the entire thing. Okay, that was unexpected. Um, <laughs> guess maybe I didn't think about that. I thought it would just log me out of um, of that window. Oh, well, let's log back in. Core, machines, um, and I want accounts. So many people have invited me to this that I can't actually get to my own private workspace. That's great, though. Thank you. Okay, so now we're here, um, and now I want to go to virtual server and machine. So, okay, so once you've navigated your way back to your machine, um, from here, what you can do is click on this little uh, gear icon here. Um, and now you'll see at the top here, you've got open desktop, open terminal, shut down, restart. So open desktop will, again, take you back to the desktop screen. Um, open terminal will open up a terminal window where you can type some terminal stuff if you just want to use it that way. Um, the other option is to SSH in from your local machine. Both those work. Uh, we've got shut down and restart. So restart is just going to restart your machine. It'll turn off for a second, then turn back on, and you'll be recharged. Shut down is the way to shut down your machine. And that is just the way to like sort of like stop the machine. You'll still be charged those monthly storage fees, but you'll no longer be charged the hourly rate. Um, so we can go ahead and click shut down. It takes a little bit of time. You see you'll, your guys spinning here. It'll take like a handful of minutes just to shut down our machine. Now, um, you will not be doing this anytime soon, but if you do want to delete this machine, the way to delete the machine is to hover over here and click deactivate. Um, and you can't deactivate your machine while it's still running, so you have to shut it down. Once it's finished shutting down, this button will become available to you. Um, now again, remember, deactivating means you're like destroying the machine. So anything saved to your, uh, to your server um, that hasn't been downloaded or moved to like your drive or any other thing will be deleted. So uh, just beware, I've had some students in the past who have hit deactivate, thinking that meant shutdown. The naming sounds a little similar, um, but if you hit deactivate, you will delete your machine. So just beware of that, and you will lose all your work. So make sure you save stuff beforehand. So that is it for this. Um, this is still taking a little bit of time to shut down, but once it's shut down, it should turn grayish and say off. Um, that's pretty much it for this demo. If you have any other questions, please let me know on Slack or on the YouTube channel, um, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.